Hey there YouTube friends. Uh, today I'm going to be giving a little bit of a real world working demonstration of Minwax's high performance wood filler. Um, actually let me kill some overhead noise here. Okay hopefully that'll be a little better. Um, this is an epoxy based uh, two-part wood filler from Minwax. It is uh, a base resin and then a hardener. You'll notice the size of the tube is quite drastically different than the size of the can. This is a 16 to 1 mixture of hardener to wood filler. Um, a couple of quick things to note here. Number one, make sure that when you're using this product or uh, any epoxy based product it's a good idea to wear a respirator um, I'm currently not wearing one and won't be through the duration of this video but it'll be a pretty quick video so I should be okay um, this uh, product is incredibly good for all kinds of different types of wood repair and fill uh, some things to note though is that the open time for this product is extremely short. When I say short, I mean we're talking, um, I want to say the can says don't mix anything that you can't use in 10 minutes. And I would say, at, and that's at room temperature. Right now we are at, uh, I don't know, it looks like about uh, 84 degrees here in my shop. It's a little warm but this is about the temperature I normally work at. Um, given the higher temperature, I'd say your open time is about five minutes. So from the time you mix this material to the time you better be done putting it on whatever you're doing, you have about five minutes. But if you plan ahead and you do a little bit of prep work, it's, uh, it's a really great product. And then there's a lot of forgiveness as well in terms of what you can do with this product after you've applied it. Um, I'm going to turn over here. I've got a 1930s era side light here that I'm doing a complete strip and restoration of. Uh, it will be painted, so I uh, don't really have to have it completely stripped back, but it's been sanded, soda blasted, stripped. Um, I've used multiple passes of acetone on it to try and get up additional oils. And you'll see that I've started the process of filling in the holes that uh, have been left over years of being nailed and, and uh, panes replaced, all kinds of work that's been done on this uh, side light. There's actually a set of two, the other one I've already uh, prepared and sanded. So I'm actually going to start out the video by showing you what this material looks like and how it reacts after you've applied it. And I'll do the application here in a moment. I put this on probably 20 minutes ago. And within the first half an hour, it's, it's incredibly malleable, even to the point of being almost like a carving clay. So once you apply this, you can come back and do any kind of scraping or cleaning very easily without a lot of uh, without having to generate a lot of dust sanding so I tend to overfill the holes uh, see there I missed I guess I should get the camera in a position where it's I was first time using this rig so um, so I, I tend to over apply and then using my scraper can scrape back um, there's a couple of holes here where I'm going to have to fill them again. Uh, didn't quite get them filled. That's okay. Um, it does happen. So once you've applied this, you can go back and kind of using a, um, a scraper. This is a hide scraper, by the way, which if you're uh, interested, this is an incredibly useful tool. comes with like four different blades. Uh, I think you can pick it up on Amazon for 14 bucks. I'll put a link in the uh, description for it. Um, it's really awesome just because you have the ability to change out these heads uh, to different things. I've found this particular head to be 
incredibly useful for a large percentage of the work that I do in, in uh, furniture restoration and uh, various types of woodworking. Yeah, so looks like I got a little bit of epoxy down inside here, so we'll we'll clean that out a little bit so that it'll fit back on there properly. All right, so back to our video here. Get that locked down. So you can see this material once it's uh, once it's fully cured is in the first, like I said, in the first 30 minutes to an hour, it's still pretty malleable, easily sandable. Um, in fact, you can totally take a sander and do exactly what I'm doing with the scraper to get rid of these layers. Um, and I accidentally put a little bit too much thickness on there, so I'll probably just sand that out. And uh, it's almost like wood bondo if you want to try to draw a conclusion as to how it works. Sometimes you'll need to make multiple passes, like for instance, this corner. It had a big nick in it, so I put a base coat on there. I need to kind of rebuild build up this corner a little bit, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to shave it back. Looks like i got a little spot there. I'll try to zoom in. So we've still got a little bit of work to do on this. I'll scrape that back some more. Here's a big uh, cut. Looks like somebody cut it with a saw at some point, uh, probably when they were putting in trim or something. And so we'll fill that in. And you can see that we'll just have a little bit of additional fill to do there. And we did this all the way down the length of the side light. There are going to be times when you'll put down this stuff. This particular spot was right towards the end as the material was hardening. And uh, you'll find sometimes that you'll miss spots and you just come back and hit it again. So now I'm going to go over here to... Um, my mixing station and uh, I'm going to kind of show you guys how I mix this material in the right size batches for the type of work that I'm doing. So in this case I actually need to uh, flip this over. We've already kind of gotten that side so now we're going to work on the other side. I've already taken a Dremel tool and worked into all of these various spots that need to be filled. You can kind of see these. A lot of these are big gouges and holes that uh, were the result of being nailed in and pulled out and nailed in and pulled out. Some of them are pretty sizable, uh, especially along the edge frame where it was um, where it was nailed into the uh, door frame. So that's what we're going to be filling. We're going to be filling all the surface holes we can locate and then we'll flip it up on its edge and address some of these these additional gouges in the wood that uh, we'll need filled. I'll do my best when I'm working here to try and keep the camera on my hands. Um, I'm using a little adapter that uh, holds the camera for me while I'm working so I can show you guys what's going on. Um, so to start out with, um, let's not mix up our new tube and our old tube. I don't know which one's which. It's kind of important because you need exactly the right amount of this stuff. So that's 23 grams. That was 17. So this is the one that goes with the tube we've already got open. So we'll put this over here. This is a whole other container that I haven't even used yet. I usually keep a can of this stuff around. A little bit goes a long way, meaning that you know you pay 15 bucks for this can um, and in you know a shop like mine where I'm doing restoration work like say for instance here's a baby crib that I'm working on from the 1960s uh, Disney characters um, I may have used um, you know probably 40 grams of this material um, over the course of the entire project now these side lights I've probably used almost half a can but that's just because we have so much uh, so much repair that needs to be made in order to make these paintable. So a couple of things from a tools perspective. You've got the resin um, that comes in the can. And you've got the hardener, like I said earlier. The, the resin is not really temperature sensitive, but it is. Um, it does have 
some some type of high VOC chemical that makes it incredibly stinky. This stuff is, I mean, I can only do a batch without a respirator on um, because the smell, and then I have to leave the room if I don't have my respirator on because it is just really nasty stuff um, in terms of the smell. Um, so you can see it's pretty, pretty, uh, it's, it's almost like peanut butter. And, uh, usually what I'll do is I'll take my, I bought this little, uh, little scale. Um, it's great for measuring out things. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of dirty, but it works really well. You can pick these up a lot of times at convenience stores or Harbor Freight, I think is where I got this one. So you can see here. We've got it zeroed out. Well, what I like to do is I like to take my putty knife. I'm going to kind of clean off my last batch here. I don't worry about getting it super duper clean because this stuff's already, it's already solid and can be scraped off when it gets a little harder and it'll come right off. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll take my knife and I'll actually just set it right on the, right on the uh, scale. Oops. There we go. And then I'll zero out the scale so that the knife is included in the weight. And then I'll take this. And usually what I found is with a popsicle stick, what about what comes off of here is somewhere between 8 and 12 grams, depending on how much you load it up. I'm going to guess this is probably, I don't know, probably 9 grams worth of material here. And we'll just... Uh, and you don't really have to worry about the open time on this stuff. It, it doesn't do anything until you've actually added the hardener. So then I usually just use the lid to put my popsicle stick in there. And we'll close that up. Now, once you've done that, then you want to set your, set your spatula on there. And that tells us we've got about 7.6 grams. I'm going to round that up and say it's 8 grams. Well... If you put 16 grams of resin, you would put one gram of hardener. So at eight grams of resin, you would want half a gram of, of hardener. Now what I've found is the little less than what they tell you to is good. It extends the open time and it doesn't really seem to affect the, uh, it, it slows down the hardening process, but it doesn't affect the end product uh, in terms of what you get. Now, once you put a drop on there, this little scale, a lot of times I have to kind of poke it. So we went from 7.6 to 8.1. So that's a little more hardener than I wanted, but it's, it's close. I mean, there's no rocket science here. It doesn't matter. I've figured out that given how warm my shop is, uh, it doesn't matter if I do the exact right amount of hardener or a little less or a little more. A little less seems to give me a little bit more time to carve, uh, but it doesn't really extend the open time. So once I've got my dab of hardener on there and my dab of resin, then I take that and I scrape that onto my knife. And then I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to mix it. And if you've ever mixed like oil paints, it's kind of the similar method you want to I'm going to scrape it to get it good and mixed in. I usually do that about three times. And by then, your clock's ticking. So what we want to do is we want to go over here and we want to start filling this in. Now, when you initially start using it, it's really nice and it's, it's, it's got a really nice consistency. So if you have something that you need to sculpt, um, make sure you're doing it early, early in the set time. Like there, that's being a little bit difficult to get filled in. So we'll just stack it up a little bit. We just kind of work our way around here. Try to get where the light's a little better. I tend to float just a little bit over the top so that it's, uh, A little bit uh, proud now I'm going to purposefully slow down normally I would be done with what's on here but what you're going to notice is within a few minutes of mixing this stuff 
it will start to thicken. And when it starts to thicken, it will start to do some un rather unusual things. So I'm going to put a little gob in there because that's a big old, it's a big old hole we're going to have to fill. So we'll make another pass on that. Once it starts to harden, it will start to lose its smoothie, cons its smooth consistency. It'll start becoming a lot more kind of dry, and that dryness. I don't know. We'll, I'll wait to smooth this on. Yeah, it's starting to starting to get that consistency now. Sorry, I try to keep that in the camera. So now it's now it's starting to get that pasty consistency, and you can kind of see. Let's see if I can get it. See how it starts to make. It starts to kind of gum up. Then you know you've got about 60 seconds before it's going to be almost unusable. In fact, it's already almost there. You can kind of still work with it even in, when it's in this real, this real. Um, kind of putty like state a lot of times I'll use it for spots like this where I need to jam it into a hole and I don't really care if it's smoothed off and I'm just mainly trying to fill a fill a void I'll use the last little bit to do that so now it's already like it, it's starting to dry you can kind of see I mean, it's, it'll be hard as a rock here in about, uh, oh, probably another, another 90 seconds. And then when it hardens, it'll be like this. It'll be like a, I don't know, kind of just a, a wood-colored epoxy. Here's a piece of uh, wax paper. Now it seems that it's kind of soft when it's uh, when it dries. Uh, let's see, this was this is a resin that didn't get uh, put in a hardener. That's actually what may be on there as well. And this is almost hard. It turns into a real kind of like clay as it goes into its final hardening state. So, like I said, once, uh, once you've applied it now, we just applied this, and it's already starting to, if you can get back to it during this stage, it's a good time to, it's real malleable. This is a good time to shape edges or uh, corners like if you happen to do what we did uh, right here so we got this little spot right here on the side and if you wanted to shape or scrape back any of that this is a good time to do it it's still got enough uh, kind of doughy consistency that you can do that And typically it doesn't shrink back at all. Um, it pretty much dries the way it uh, the way it's laid down. But you will find that occasionally you'll have to go back over something and do some additional some additional fill. But I'll tell you what, when you hit this with a sander, it is it, it it's smooth. It's just like the wood is. I mean, there's it's really amazing stuff. They've they've engineered this as an epoxy that um, that when hardened um, is rock hard and bonds to the wood really well. is very sandable uh, and at the same time uh, very easy to work with. Aside from the incredible fumes. So there's a, a quick intro to Minwax wood filler, high performance wood filler. Pick it up in most any big box store. I'll put links down in the uh, down in the description for you can pick it up on Amazon. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler, and I'll be happy to to do what I can to help you out. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.